Ladies and gentlemen, I am Najmul Islam. You are watching Natural Civilization program at Natural TV. Today we will talk on human trafficking and as we know the worldwide crime of human trafficking has been existing since the age of slavery which was legally followed by countries for forcibly exploitation. This organized crime is extensively in practice now in almost all the regions of the world. As stated in the International Labor Organization and Work Free Report in 2017, there are estimated 40.3 million victims in this modern slavery by 2016, out of which 24.9 million are in forced labor and 15.4 are in forced marriages. Even the reported the exposed by the United Nations that next to arms and drug trafficking, human trafficking is the third most common crime in the world. Even the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey reported in 2019, according to that report, the most common form of human trafficking is sexual exploitation. And the victims of sexual exploitation are predominantly women and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, let's to be tuned with us and today we will talk with our expert on this issue of human trafficking. You are welcome to watch our program at Natural Civilization program at Natural TV. Ladies and gentlemen, again welcome to our program Natural Civilization at Natural TV. As we talk before, like we will talk on human trafficking and we mentioned like we will, uh, we have a two expert who will talk on human trafficking. As you see in front of me, there is Miss Noor and also Mr. Sajid Khan. I just want to clarify the expert, the background, uh, who will talk on this human trafficking. As you said, the Ms. Noor, she is a postgraduate researcher from Ankara University. Even she is also a freelance researcher at Bosch Parash Migration Study Center. And she has worked a lot of works on human trafficking. Even we have a Mr. Sajid Khan. He's from India and working on the migration and the refugee issues, especially focusing on human trafficking. And Mr. Sajid Khan, he is also seeing the issues that related with uh, women and exploitation were uh, we mentioned in our talk like the human trafficking. And Mr. Sajid Khan is also working in Migration Policy Center at Ankara Yeldin Bayezid University as a researcher and he is also a PhD candidate at Hajitepe University. Welcome to our program, Ms. Uh, Mr. Sajid and also Ms. Noor. Uh, as I uh, started to our program, uh, I just want to uh, uh, start by Ms. Noor. Uh, how do you clarify the human trafficking uh, as we uh, talk like the, the understanding of human trafficking? How do you define this? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting us to talk such an important issue and uh, uh, the topic which raised to the top of the agenda of international community. Uh, human trafficking actually has become a common topic of the humanitarian field and also uh, global poverty conversation. And there are many uh, articles written on the issue, and uh, after the ex especially after the years of 2000s, and there have been implementations on the legislations and the uh, action plans on this issue, uh, especially because of the crisis happening in the Middle Eastern countries. So uh, let me read a UN protocol definition uh, for our audiences. It will be much better to read, actually. Uh, as the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, of abduction of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power for position of vulnerability, or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. Exploitation uh, shall include an minimum. Uh, the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sex sexual exploitation, forced labor or services. So human trafficking um, can be in different types, we, can, we will talk about them later. But I want to um, underline the situation that human trafficking can be uh, confused with the issue of human smuggling. Actually, uh, I want to underline this uh, topic because human smuggling means uh, taking uh, one person with a force without his consent and without this consent happens up to the arriving uh, country 
we say this a destination country. But in human trafficking, the relationship between the traffickers and the victims continue after taking them from tra uh, transport, after their transportation and after taking them to the destination country. And the purpose here is to exploit person, uh, and that depends, like, uh, that may take many years. And even that person is rescued by the authorities or police officers or the governments, the effects are still on the victims. So it is really hard to uh, take this topic uh, and uh, discuss this issue. And one more issue, I want to uh, tell you that how the procedure of human trafficking goes on. The human trafficking constitutes of act, mean, and purpose. Let's uh, talk about them one by one. Act means like mm, taking one person from one uh, region to another. It is like transportation. Like uh, if there is a man uh, in one country and he has uh, economic problems, then he decides to go somewhere. So this uh, history, th this story of transportation starts and this means act. And the second issue which is important element in human trafficking agenda is that mean. The mean means the threat. One, uh, one thing comes to our minds like uh, why the victims cannot run away or uh, tell this to the police officer or something. That, uh, that is, uh, they catch the traffickers, hold them with the threats or they promise them like little money or mo uh, much more money and uh, they deceive them. This means means. And the last thing is, uh, if we talk about this, the purpose. The purpose of exploitation. If, uh, like two or three weeks ago, uh, our Minister of Interior, Mr. Suleiman Soylu, told about an issue. In Turkey, uh, like mm, the arm uh, smuggling, he said it decreased. It is actually a positive news, but it changed its uh, crime uh, with the uh, human trafficking. When the border security is increases, uh, then those people use other people to exploit them, to take advantage of their money. So this was the definition. Mm, uh, that's a really good understanding and a good definition. That's the way you define the human trafficking. Uh, however, I just want to uh, go to Mr. Uh, Sajid. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, we understand, like that, the human trafficking, as Ms. Noor uh, clarified, uh, from different perspective, like human trafficking uh, as one kind of human smuggling, and then he tried to um, use this uh, issue, like the destination place, uh, transition place, and that how the human uh, traffickers, especially the traffic who are working with this issue, how they are working. How, who, however, uh, to go the deep and intensive discussion on this issue, I, I just want to ask you like who are the most affected people uh, of human trafficking how, how do you define actually uh, to be honest uh, this uh, human trafficking phenomena is not a very it's an illegal phenomena but again it's a very systematic and highly organized phenomena if you talk uh, about this kind of trade human trade this is very organized a lot of mafia people are involved in this uh, if you see a lot of politicians are involved a lot of uh, how can I say, a lot of uh, companies and a lot of professionals are involved in this. So it's really hard, you know, to, uh, it's really hard to remove or eliminate this kind of uh, trade. But this illegal tra trafficking is, uh, is going on in each part of the world, you know. Uh, no, one, no one can deny that this is not happening in, uh, in any place. Uh, the best part, as Nurafsha uh, defined that, there are three things which are really important. The act, the means, the purpose of this uh, trafficking. Uh, but apart from that, there are three things which are also important, that is the source country, the transit country, and the destination country. Uh, this whole uh, trade started from the source country where the trafficker identify the person and give him kind of threat, force, or kind of bribe, and they took them from there, and they, through transit nations, you know, maybe it could be short-term transit or the long-term transit, they took it to the destination country where they were exploited, harassed, or maybe they were forced to do such kind of uh, f unwilling uh, works like maybe sexual work or maybe kind of low wages work, something. So the whole phenomena is uh, around 
source country transit country and destination country in the whole whole phenomena is this and there are a lot of people there but can in we this. can we say like can you argue something like this mm -hmm. the most of the actually human trafficking as we saw in the whole world uh is it's because of economy actually because they like uh they feel like they train they think like when they are going to uh, especially uh let's let's uh, uh mm -hmm. forget about the traffickers Re think about the uh, who are actually exploited by this mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. those people those people actually are involving with this issue i mean like they Taking or even giving money to the traffickers because of economy, they think like yeah, they, if they can yeah. go to the Europe or like uh, uh, um, how we can say the, some Western developed or developed country, yeah. then they will gain so much money. Yeah. How do you there are actually there are multiple reasons for uh, for this uh, trade. You know there are multiple reasons for human trafficking. The one such reason could be that what you have mentioned economical hurdles or economical uh, situa weak situa situation. But again, at this moment, if you will see, there are a lot of civil wars going on in different nations. Uh, these kind of political conflicts, you know, these kind of wars also uh, ra raise increases the human trafficking, you know. Because when there is a co political conflict, when there is a war, people wanted to move from one area to another area to a safer place. And the trafficker... This is the best opportunity for them to traffic human beings, you know. Uh, like, for example, in Syria, there are a lot of uh, cases that a lot of Syrians, migrants, were trafficked to different nations, especially the children are the targets for these traffickers, you know. So it's not only po economic issue, it's not only the... Uh, but there are many reasons, there are multiple reasons for behind this ongoing... Oh, okay, let's... Uh, uh, before going to that uh, deep discussion, I just want to ask to Ms. Uh, Noor about, like, the... Uh, as Mr. Sajid told, uh, those kind of issues, like the human traffic and the reasons, uh, could you please tell us, like, the, uh, is there any kind of human trafficking or what kind of types of human trafficking is uh, uh, working in the whole world now? Actually, there are uh, many kinds of human trafficking which is happening in the world. Uh, like one of them is sexual abuse, uh, labor force, uh, forced marriage. A special forced marriage, for example, happens in Middle Eastern countries, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in Kuwait. And also uh, there is uh, like organ harvesting. Uh, it is also like uh, forcing people to work. And this type of uh, human trafficking depends on the country also. For example, uh, in uh, southern Asian countries, uh, generally uh, women are forced to go to marriage, and uh, especially after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, there happened to be sexual and labor force exploitation uh, in the human trafficking. And there was a huge inf influx to the Turkey uh, from Central Asia and Southern Asia uh, to work illegally. And the bad thing about uh, uh, like uh, working uh, with force is that they have no social security, they have no welfareness, or they have no uh, guarantee. Uh, they just work uh, for hours w without knowing anything, and uh, like they are deceived, uh, they are d deprived of sleep and uh, enough food, for example. And about like organ harvesting is especially in last years, in recent years, there happened to be increasing in diabetes, and people uh, tend to uh, use these illegal issues by the help of innocent people, by the help of uh, like by the uh, preying on the people's dreams in Middle Eastern countries. This uh, hum like uh, unhuman thing happens especially in third world countries. Before reading and researching uh, the things on human trafficking, I thought that this only happens in third world countries, but it didn't happen to be like that. According to Jennifer or, uh, Turner, uh, the human rights expert, she mentioned that this human trafficking it doesn't happen only in third world countries. Like, uh, it also happens in America and major countries also. So uh, there are being uh, major uh, like uh, preventions. Uh, there are being uh, workshops to prevent this uh, illegal works, illegal uh, labor, and the sexual abuse uh, workshops. But it doesn't enough actually in the world now. I just want to ask uh, to Mr. Sajid, like uh, as Ms. Noor told something, some issues like the types of uh, human trafficking and how it's worth the whole world. Uh, as you know, this in South. 
South Asia, especially in uh, uh, India, Pakistan, or uh, Bangladesh, even recently there are a lot of news actually early related to uh, Bangladesh and also mm -hmm. India. The women, uh, especially who are moving to uh, Middle East, especially uh, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia and some Middle Eastern countries, uh, they are treated like a slave. You know, uh, even also the women, uh, especially who are uh, not that much ages, as we saw the so many reported uh, related to the women or female, we can say that from India, they are forced marriage or maybe forced uh, uh, sexually abused by the um, like uh, some owner of uh, them, in especially in Saudi Arabia. So how do you think those kind of issue or the government initiatives or is it really the uh, fall off or is it really the re result of human trafficking actually to be uh, if you will see the reports of uh, Amer us you know uh, the reports of 2019 says that saudi arabia including russia china these are some of the tier 3 category countries you know which are doing minimum to stop human trafficking you know uh, the problem with india and south asian countries is that some of these countries are uh, overpopulated and because of that there are issues of poverty you know lack of resources so these people they try to you know and when uh, if and you know that when there is a when there is a, a petrol found in saudi arabia the influx of labor you know started more from india pakistan bangladesh you know so these people they they they, they used to go and work there you know and and suddenly there was a huge influx of labor labor modern the we call it modern day slavery you know there was a huge influx of modern day labors and these labors are forced to work uh, in a very bad situation in a very bad dirty jobs dangerous jobs you know so yeah but i i, I do not agree with uh, this that only indian or pakistani or south asian but there are also filipino there are some indonesians women they are suffering in some other countries so uh, it's all up to the government and civil societies who are running there, you know, in these countries, especially in the uh, in the Middle East countries, because in Middle East countries, where there is very less, like the whole, there are very less uh, things which uh, are done to eradicate, to eliminate this modern day slavery. So it's up to the government of uh, those countries who should come in front and work for this and to stop this human modern day slavery, you know this you know? one report uh, I, I was reading yesterday it mm. said like the last four years the almost 52 bangladeshi uh, mm. women workers who went to saudi arabia for works purposes they were uh, died mm. in saudi arabia because of the torture yes uh, but you know this uh, this really hard we can include those kind of issue inside the human trafficking because as we miss noor also explained mm -hmm. it very well the definition of human trafficking because this uh, woman who went to the you know uh, these uh, places like uh, saudi arabia or other middle east countries they went the backup of the government i mm -hmm. mean the government uh, uh, give a, yeah exactly government give them permission go uh, they come here legally so yeah. uh, how we can actually argue this with this kind of issue like why and the government give permission? permission yeah this is how where things become very critical you know that uh, you have to stop it in the source country you know like because but the governments cannot do because they also have some economical problem you know they cannot stop them from working in another country and they cannot give them employment in their own country so this is how when the, the whole phenomenon of liberalization and globalization started the countries started to send their people to the different nations so that they could not have extra burden of giving employment you know so when these things started uh, a lot of people migrated to middle east a lot of people went to saudi arabia and other nations and uh, this 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 is a very serious issue right now because uh, if you will read the new reports international reports very little is done to stop this kind of crime you know we do not even some countries they are they are uh, they are do not consider this kind of things as an human trafficking they do not they, they said this is a kind of modern day slavery they, they said that this is a kind of exploitation but this is not just exploitation this is more than that this is uh, purposeful human trafficking slavery kind of things so uh, but the government should do something against this you know we are we we we, we are so sorry that our government or people on these uh, people who are in a political uh, place they are not doing enough to stop this
Yep, that's uh, that's really uh, we understand. But uh, in that case, as we saw, like the if we uh, understand the transit uh, country, mm -hmm. I think that the especially the most of the uh, the uh, like the what we can say the workers or. Uh, uh, in what type the levers or yeah. illegal migrants who are went to the destination destination country they are using the transit country and in that case I just want to ask a very special question to the Ms. No because especially you are also from Turkey and working on this issue for a long time so how do you see the Turkish role in this kind of issue I mean as a tran transit country uh, what kind of policies are Turkey is taking and uh, what kind of combating uh, uh, they are taking to uh, control the uh, human trafficking or human trafficking issue uh, before answering your question can I add something before mm. your question yeah please? of course if you will. Uh, for example uh, there are statistics the numbers the numbers show us the realities actually uh, for example according to the reports uh, like there is a, an influx and uh, irregular immigration influx uh, from uh, southern Africa to the Italy and also there is an influx of m migrants uh, from Turkey to Greece. When we look at the uh, numbers, this is uh, published in Sabah Daily News, that uh, the number of the people uh, arriving from uh, southern Africa to Italy are uh, about 150 uh, thousands of people. And the number of uh, the people who are escaping from Turkey to Greece or in the road of in the migration route of between these countries are also more than 150,000 people. I want to underline the conclusion of this migration and this unsafe journey. The people who are dead, uh, who are turned up to be dead uh, between the southern Africa and Italy, the number is uh, 4,000, around 4,000 people. But the people who are dead, the t that toll of the people between uh, Greece and Turkey is only 400, around 400 people, 436, something like that. I want to uh, simply uh, uh, tell here that, uh, as you told before, about the countries, about the people, uh, when we see the influx, the irregular migration has a link but, uh, with the uh, uh, the human trafficking also because uh, when we talk about the uh, regular migration also people are uh, vulnerable to be trafficked because they have no money they have no security they have nothing so, so uh, I, I just want to uh, I'm sorry miss no we will uh, continue or uh, uh, you mm -hmm. from you talking okay. I just want to stop you here and uh, um, our audience uh, we just want to stop for our uh, commercial break and we believe you will not uh, uh, you will be stay with us and we'll see you after commercial break Welcome back our audience after the commercial break. Uh, we will continue our uh, talk on human trafficking as, as, you, as you see this is our um, expert Ms. Nurepshan. Noor, she is talking on the human trafficking and the, some uh, statistical data and we would like to uh, again invite Mr. Nurepshan to tell to our audiences and to us to uh, from starting your point of view. Uh, thank you, Mr. Najmul. Uh, my uh, statistics were like uh, the the toll between uh, Greece and Turkey and also Southern Africa and uh, Italy. The that toll was 400 uh, people in Turkey part and 4,000 people in European part. Uh, from here, we can see that how the uh, countries uh, gives importance to the lives of the people, to the lives of the civilians, actually, and uh, if. If we come to your question about what 
uh, Turkish uh, policies and uh, actually Turkey took uh, to uh, uh, combat uh, this kind of human trafficking because as we know the Turkey is the transit country uh, before the human uh, traffic use Turkey uh, to go their destination country so what kind of policy Turkey is taking till now to uh, resolve this problem and what kind of policies they are uh, maintaining uh, for the secure this kind of problem Actually, your question is so much valuable for this field because Turkey is the most refugee hosting country in the world. Uh, so, uh, because this is a crucial uh, topic, uh, Turkey uh, initiates uh, many uh, administrative and legal uh, uh, regulations about this uh, phenomena. Uh, it gives much more importance to the, for the prevention, protection, persecution, and cooperation about uh, human trafficking. Uh, first of all, let me uh, talk about the legislative regulations on what Turkey has done up to now. Uh, actually, Turkey uh, has a panel code, uh, Article 80. According to this uh, panel code, Turkey uh, gives punishment to the traffickers from 8 to 12 years in the jail. And also, uh, in this legislative uh, regulations, uh, Turkey added sexual abuse uh, to its regulations to get the standards of Europe. And according to the last uh, recent reports of America, uh, there was a criticism written about Turkey that uh, Turkey is doing a, a best uh, to um, achieve uh, the best standards to combat human trafficking. And to do this, uh, Turkey added uh, sexual abuse to the, uh, its legislations also. And uh, in administrational uh, measures, uh, there is also a uh, law on fragrance, international protection, in this uh, protection, uh, the victims are thought, especially uh, the victims can stay in the country up to the three years. The reason is that uh, when you talk with a, like, I had a chance to meet one victim of trafficking in my life. Uh, and um, we can understand that that person, if he or she experienced that uh, tragic event, he can't get rid of this event uh, like in one day or two days. It can stay even like psychologically uh, up to the five years or all of uh, his life. So th seeing this uh, case, Turkey lets uh, people stay in the country up to the three years and also gives uh, psychosocial support to the victims of trafficking in the shelters. The shelters are in three major cities in Turkey especially, uh, like they are uh, Istanbul, Ankara and Kırıkkale. The addresses are not public uh, actually. And uh, these are were the administrational regulations and th there is also the other regulation which is under the Minister of Interior, uh, which is uh, like national task force. Uh, in the national task force, uh, the ministry uh, aims to take actions uh, and uh, the purpose is to bring together the relevant institutions because here the cooperation is much more crucial uh, because uh, when you don't discuss the issue, you cannot do what you will done. Uh, what uh, should be done because this is not a nation this is this crime is not a local crime this is a global crime transnational crime so all the countries all the uh, relevant institutions uh, should know and should share their experiences with themselves from this point of view, uh, I just want to move to uh, Mr. Uh, Khan uh, to talk on, uh, especially, you know, this in South Asia or Southeast Asia, mostly the other source of mm -hmm. this human trafficking, even also you mentioned it very clearly. Uh, as we know, uh, you mentioned it very clearly, the countries named like Indonesia, Philippines, uh, maybe Cambodia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and in these countries, even the Afghanistan, I mean, those countries is not actually the war torn countries, except uh, Afghanistan but they are the actually source countries but um, as we know that they are using some you know uh, uh, the line what we can say that the actually the link 
for example that the, so the the line they are maintaining from like for example if the pe um, the people we can say that the who are, who are want to come go to the europe they come to from india to maybe you know some central asian country Centrist. then from central asia to uh, somehow maybe iran and then from iran to they use the border of turkey and then from border of turkey they go, went to the actually greece or like maybe uh, some like african uh, who, who are using this way like illegal migrants they are using libya or like a morocco mm -hmm. and they, they are uh, went to the then Euro european countries so as we know about this but however i just want to ask you specifically the south asia or southeast asia countries policy especially the India like what kind of policy are they taking like uh, against the human traffickers sorry though to stop the human trafficking actually if you take the whole of the South Asia uh, there are many countries different cultures different nations and our problems are also very different you know uh, if you will see the if you, I talk from the Indian perspectives you know uh, Indian Constitution did not allow human trafficking you know it, it, it declares human trafficking as an illegal act uh, but again, in India, there is a lot of uh, cases of human trafficking, uh, especially uh, if I'm not wrong, the Crime Bureau records of 2016 says there are more than 15,000 trafficking in just 2016 alone. And out of them, 54% traffic people were women and girls. So uh, this human trafficking issue is a really a very serious issue for India. Uh, and if you will see, there are uh, some uh, regional platforms also just like shark south asian association of regional corporations which includes pakistan india you know the eight countries uh, asia, of uh, eight south countries, asia yeah, south asian countries these countries have a common uh, how can say conventions on human trafficking and women trafficking just to stop the human trafficking they have some convention and according to this convention the trafficking of women and children is illegal in all these regions but uh, but there are still a lot of trafficking happening, especially from the Nepal side. Uh, from if, if I talk about the India, then there are a lot of people who are trafficked to Nepal. There are a lot of people from Bangladesh who are trafficked to uh, uh, Middle East. You know, uh, there are a lot of people from Pakistan who are trafficked to uh, again to Middle East and other nations. So this issue for the whole of the South Asia. Uh, even we saw the one very interesting news mm -hmm. from uh, like uh, uh, Arab Emirates and also Saudi Arabia. Some uh, older uh, man they went to India mm -hmm. to marry a um, like yes. a, um, how I can say the um, a teen girl. Even also like uh, like uh, their age is twelve or thirteen. They try to marry them and uh, that, that's the according to them it's a one kind of good business. This is this this comes under the forced marriage. You know like. It, Again, it is a part of human traffic. Again, it is a part of modern slavery. But uh, this is all because of the uh, poverty, because of the how can say the uh, the lack of uh, money. Uh, because in villages, a lot of people they are really poor. They need money, so they get into this kind of businesses. You know, and there are some agencies also. Especially what I have heard that in Iran also there are some agencies which do some such kind of things. Uh, Unfortunately, we do not have a very strong uh, law, strong uh, kind of uh, regulations to control all this. Even uh, what I uh, res with during the research, I try to find out some. There are some kind of, especially in India, there are such some kinds of acts and laws which I want to read here from here. There are some laws which uh, which stops child labor. Where there are some laws which stops transplantation of human organs. There are some laws which uh, prohibits. Uh, sexual harassments of children. There are some also laws, criminal laws, which prohibits the child labor. So there are there are the various laws and regulations. But how good is implementation? Implementations of these laws is important. You know how the because if you will see uh, uh, all these countries, you know they have a very uh, they they sometimes they do not have a very good relations. You know. Uh, if if and and that that movement their international relations also get affected you know so uh, that's why we need to come up with very strong regulations to, and we also have uh, very closed borders you know so that's that that is the reason anyway i just want to move to actually uh, uh miss uh, uh, noor uh, to to say to us because you know this the women and the girls uh, they are 
the more as we saw the report it uh, showed the most of the actually time the traffickers uh, and uh, the trafficking it's happened with the women and girls and they knows that when they are wait uh, they went to the destination country um, mostly they are involved or they used by the human traffickers as like you know uh, how we can say like in a whorehouse or like, a, a, like as we saw that the, in academic um, terminology sexual harassment and abuses and so so an exploitation so in that case like why women are um, like what kind of methodology these human traffickers are using to convince them to go to the destination country though they know that this, this this will be the terrible and also dangerous for them uh, actually in the recent years uh, there has been like uh, the women in migration are uh, taking part mostly. Uh, before these uh, years, they had a fear uh, to just like leave their regions. They had a fear of other countries or other worlds or the perspectives. But now the women uh, are more uh, well, they are more vulnerable actually because um, the human trafficking. One of the features of human trafficking is that it happens uh, within the relatives. Uh, if you have a person in your uh, family, and uh, if he or she went to other country or other region and had a better life, then this uh, story begins. The other people in the family begins to seek the ways to get rid of the country. As we mentioned before, that the economic reasons are taking major parts. Uh, to affect this human trafficking and uh, for example in uh, United Nations of America uh, if the people uh, if the children are under the age of 18 and if they are sexually abused uh, in the legislations it is uh, meant that this is human trafficking and also in sexual abuse and labor market this black market. Uh, economically, uh, traffickers gain much more than other fields because, like as we told before, also that uh, human trafficking takes third major uh, crimes in the world after arm and drug. So uh, this should be taken into consideration by the humanitarian field also. So I want to add the one more thing, one more question to you, like the what kind of international law are, are um, taking actually measurement to stop the, uh, this kind of uh, things happen by human traffickers? Uh, actually, Universal Declaration of uh, Humanity is the like uh, the major uh, part of this, and that's the starting point, and uh, it's, it has the humanitarian uh, laws. So, and also according to, the, like, as Palermo Protocol was put into force, and also it was signed uh, by uh, Turkey in 2003, uh, it gives, uh, like, it added, as we talked, uh, women and girls uh, to their uh, protocol. And also one more thing that Greta, uh, which is the Convention of European Council, is also very important. But do you think is it really a working effectively or just only uh, the textbook based laws? I mean, so what do you think actually as in, in your uh, working, uh, because you're working on this issue, how do you see actually, is it really working or uh, it's just only for textbook messages or like we can see that's only paper based? Like in every field of our lives, the success bring uh, is uh, depends on uh, the balance between uh, practice and theory. Like in every field, so in this uh, field, uh, as the United Nations reports tell us, else that uh, the combating measures and uh, uh, differ from country to country. Even in America, for example, states has different uh, legislative measures uh, and. Uh, in such kind of views, we can see that every country should uh, bring this issue to their agenda. And here also the social awareness is, is much more important. And uh, uh, especially Turkey is uh, getting much better about taking reports and releasing them, and releasing the information about human trafficking. Okay, uh, anyway, our program is almost going to finish. I just, the last question I just want to ask to uh, Mr. Sajid, also to uh, Ms. Noor, I mean, to, if you want to add anything like the, what kind of solution actually if we want to stop this human trafficking uh, in a very short way uh, first of all I would like to say that uh, this whole phenomena is so organized so systematic that we need a very strong international platform where we can discuss this uh, as Noor uh, pointed out that 
there is very less social awareness about human trafficking and that is why a person who is being trafficked cannot understand that I am going to be trafficked or I am in this uh, situation. So the first of all we need a very good social awareness and then we, I, apart from the international government agencies or from the uh, government of that uh, country itself, we also need a very strong civil society's uh, involvement. Because when you will see, there are so many countries which are performing very bad in el eliminating human trafficking, especially if you will see the entire three countries like Russia, China, uh, Saudi Arabia and all these countries. But there are some civil so societies in those countries which are performing very good. But, but they lack funds, they lack international platforms, they lack authorities. They, therefore, they cannot operate independently, they cannot operate uh, in a very, they, they cannot reach to the larger masses. That is why we should give more uh, authority, we should give more support to the civil societies who are working in, in anti-human trafficking agendas, you know. We should give them more chances, we should also uh, promote social awareness about the human trafficking so that the people should not get uh, engaged in these kind of things. I want to move to also Ms. Noor, like if you have a more comments on solution. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, as Meet Peterson said, uh, the Turkish uh, Turkey representative of International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent, uh, she also underlines this topic that education in human trafficking is important because sometimes people cannot know uh, whether they are being trafficked or not. And uh, we should uh, also uh, mention that uh, like hotlines of the countries. For example, there are like 157 is the hotline for Turkey. You can call if you are uh, if you think that you are being trafficked or not. And also uh, sharing the experiences between countries and bet between relevant institutions. Because in every country, this uh, human trafficking, this transnational crime happens in a diff different way. Because the capacity, uh, the social uh, like reality is uh, diff differing uh, from country to country. So uh, these uh, things are important uh, for the human trafficking. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ms. Nurefshan and also Mr. Sajid Khan uh, to be with us and to, be, to talk on very prestigious and very special issue on human trafficking. I really appreciate uh, your explanation and your outline and highlighting points uh, to salute or to resolve the human trafficking and also you are defining the human trafficking and how it's working especially to identify the transit country and their roles measurement especially the Turkey even the source countries uh, Mr. Khan also analyzes the Indian issue and we saw that the how they are uh, actually w went uh, to the destination country and the human traffickers how they are um, uh, working with uh, with this kind of p people and uh, how it's slavery on those kind of issues happening and again i really th uh, thank you so much actually to be uh, to come to our program and um, i also um, thanks to our uh, listeners and audiences to be with us and we welcome to you to be with us in our next episode uh, in natural civilization program at natural tv with mr islam thank you <laughs>